Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at why commercial airplanes don't have parachutes. Seatbelts and airbags in cars save passengers' lives. Parachutes save people who, for a variety of reasons, exit a plane in mid-flight. So why aren't parachutes provided to passengers on commercial airline flights in case of emergencies? Well, because they almost certainly wouldn't save anyone's life. First, some of the basics of parachuting. When your average daredevil skydives for fun, the plane is traveling at between 80 and 110 miles per hour when the skydiver jumps. For tandem and accelerated freefall AFF, the jumps occur between 10,000 and 13,000 feet, while static jumps can be as low as 3,500 feet. Student divers choosing the easiest tandem jump where the newbie is physically and securely attached to an experienced instructor are required to undergo a half hour of basic ground instruction. Brave neophytes who wish to fly untethered will have to endure four to five hours of intense ground instruction, including learning body flight maneuvers and hand signals that instructors use to coach the student as they fly alongside. For an AFF jump, although not harnessed together, freshman flyers are accompanied by two instructors who hold onto the student's harness until it's deployed. Those who choose a static line jump also have to take four plus hours of training prior to the jump, although the parachute is deployed as the rookie flyer leaves the aircraft. When skydivers leave a plane, they do it alone or in small groups. When successive groups will be jumping, they try to keep separated by anywhere between 500 and 1,500 feet. This is often accomplished by waiting until the preceding group is back under the tail to 45 degrees behind the airplane or several seconds in between groups. Experienced skydivers can make even riskier jumps, although when descents begin at higher than 15,000 feet, the risk of hypoxia and being significantly affected by altitude increases dramatically and divers are less able to make effective safe decisions at critical times. Therefore, divers who jump from 15,000 feet or higher carry supplemental oxygen. Further, each parachute weighs around 40 pounds and the equipment is expensive. To be fully outfitted with rig, main reserve, ADD, altimeter, jumpsuit, helmet, and goggles, it can run between $5,900 and $9,000. And now some of the basics of a commercial airplane. Perhaps the most popular commercial jetliner is the Boeing 737 family. Its 737-800 can carry nearly 200 people, including the crew. Although speeds can vary slightly, the 737-800 travels at approximately 600 miles per hour when at its cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. Cruising altitudes are assigned by air traffic controllers and are usually up to 39,000 feet, except for longer flights that may fly higher. So now on to why individual parachutes won't improve passenger safety. Let's do some of the math. Passenger training. Since four hours of training just to board a plane is unrealistic, passengers would have to read and execute detailed skydiving instructions, including how to properly strap the chute on in order to benefit from the parachute. Not everyone is good at following detailed technical instructions, even when time and stress aren't a factor. In a situation when the plane is going down and one has only a moment to get the parachute properly strapped on, likely while keeping an oxygen mask firmly attached and perhaps also needing to keep the seatbelt on, to keep from being thrown about in the cabin, it's unlikely most would be able to even get this far. Then there's the problem of every man for himself. Unless passengers wanted to fly suited up and tethered for a static jump, parachuting from a commercial airplane will be an AFF jump. However, unlike the conditions that students get, training and trained instructors to insist, commercial passengers will just have to learn as they go. In addition, they will have to keep calm and proceed in an orderly fashion, which will require most to potentially wait their turn to exit. This is not likely to happen. And then there's the fact that the parachuting equipment is really bulky. Adding just parachutes, not counting helmets, altimeters, etc. for each passenger, would add another 8,000 pounds or so to the flight's weight. In addition, that equipment would take up space that is already at a premium. And then there's the problem that parachuting only makes sense if something happens mid-flight. The only feasible time for people to jump from the plane is while it's cruising. However, most fatal airline accidents occur on airplanes during takeoff and landing. Consider that between 2003 and 2012, only 9% of all 
four fatal accidents on commercial flights, seven total, occurred while the plane was cruising. Moreover, at least one of those accidents happened as a result of wind shear or thunderstorm. This is exactly where parachuting is extremely dangerous, even if you're an expert. So even if parachuting were feasible from a jetliner, the conditions in which the parachutes could theoretically save lives are almost never apparent in fatal commercial accidents. But even if they were, it still wouldn't be a good idea. Jetliners cruise very high and very fast. At 35,000 feet, three times higher than a typical jump, every passenger would need high-altitude equipment, halo, that includes an oxygen tank, mask, and regulator, as well as a flight suit, ballistic helmet, and altimeter, just to manage the thin air. Or they could pass out from hypoxia and wake up later, hopefully when the parachute automatically deployed at under 15,000 to 20,000 feet. Of course, none of this would matter since the plane is moving so fast, 600 miles per hour, and it is so large that many passengers would almost certainly smash into it and suffer debilitating, if not fatal, injuries. There is hope, however. Over the past few years, many small planes have been equipped with whole plane parachutes that slow the craft's descent. As of late 2013, the largest planes equipped with these safety devices carry five people, but plans are in the works for putting them on larger crafts. As one manufacturer said, there is no doubt that big commercial airlines of the future will be equipped with some kind of parachute recovery system. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a like below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right are some other videos that we've put together, so be sure to check those out. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.